God bless one and all once again. This is Brother Darren, Hebrews 9 verse 27 and John 3 verse 16. So, I hadn't been planning to make this video tonight. It kind of dropped into my spirit, I believe led by the Lord. And it's a little bit of a variation or should I say more elabor elaboration on recent themes that I've been uh, looking at recently uh, regarding Daniel chapter 7, um, the mark of the beast, uh, currency um, and you know things of that nature but I remember some time ago thinking um, you know as far as things shape up for the world as far as the empires of the world are concerned and um, what has transpired as far as these empires are concerned um, you know the acts that have, have been carried out against humanity uh, and how it all shapes up biblically and prophetically I remember thinking to myself you know how has this all taken place and the first way in which we know it's basically taken place is obviously through military uh, conquest and the establishment of government in that particular empire's, um, you know, uh, rule. And, you know, via that rule, essentially, we then see what is decreed by that particular empire and what is brought out or enforced. Now, currencies I've mentioned is... Um, a way in a form in which this takes place and the bible has much to say about money it says for the love of money is the root of all evil when you cannot love uh, god and mammon and i believe mammon links to money but in daniel chapter 7 we get beasts which is symbolic of world empires and the last one um as uh, one of the beasts that has great teeth is supposed to be Rome. Um, the Bible in Daniel, uh, sorry, in Revelation chapter 13, um, then gives an image of another beast um, and one other beast which comes after that, which should enable the nations of the world to kind of worship the first beast in, in Revelation chapter 13. Um, and the first beast is either comprised of the previous world empires um, or holds characteristics of it. Um, in particular with, you know, great uh, connection to Rome. Now, I was led to look at Roman currency tonight and... Um, how that shapes and fits up with um, the rest of the things that I've been uncovering. But let's take a look at what I found. So what this says is uh, Roman currency for most of Roman history consisted of gold, silver, bronze, oracleum and copper coinage. From its introduction to the Republic during the 3rd century BC well into imperial times, Roman currency saw many changes in form denomination and composition a persistent feature was the inflationary debasement and replacement of coins over the centuries notable examples of this followed the reforms of diocletian and this trend continued into byzantine times now i'm not going to dwell on it too much but for those of you who are not familiar with the emperor diocletian the emperor diocletian was the one who tried in uh, the last persecution or, or wave of persecutions against the Christians to wipe them out or to purge them. Uh, after that, uh, Constantine produced the Edict of Milan, which is said to have given tolerance for Christianity, but also alert, allowed for the merging of uh 
you know, Roman paganism with Christianity, which has in particular been seen through uh, Roman Catholicism. But um, I thought this was very interesting in terms of what was said for Roman currency. Now, if we go down to authority to mint coins, it says the manufacture of coins in the Roman culture dating from about the 4th century BC significantly influenced later development of coin minting in Europe. The origin of the word mint is ascribed to the manufacture of silver coin at Rome in 269 BC at the temple of Juno Monita, which sounds just like money. This goddess became the personification of money and her name was applied both to money and to its place of manufacture. Roman mints were spread widely across the empire and were sometimes used for propaganda purposes. Okay, stop there, end quote. Now, I never knew of the tie-ins that you see right there to money in its present-day form. And that also, um, following the, the, the reforms of Diocletian, the replacement of coins and the progression of money in terms of its shape and its form and what currency looked like, looked like um, basically occurred. Now, another astounding thing that I came across was in regards to currency in general. Originally, money was a form of receipt representing grain stored in temple granaries in Sumer in ancient Mesopotamia, Mesopotamia and later in ancient Egypt. Now this is a Wikipedia link on currency. Now, what was interesting from this, as I scroll down, if I can find it, is this. In Europe, paper money was first introduced on a regular basis in Sweden in 1661. Although Washington Irving records an earlier emergency use of it by the Spanish in a siege during the conquest of Granada. And it says, as Sweden was rich in copper, many copper coins were in circulation. But its relatively low value necessitated extraordinarily big coins, often weighing several kilograms. Now, for those of you who've not seen what I've posted uh, on Neuralink which is the um, implantable brain chip that's been developed by Elon Musk, which to me is either a precursor or a predecessor of the Mark of the Beast, or at least opens up um, that pioneering channel. You know, this is all quite, quite astonishing, but back to Sweden... Um, so Sweden, of course, is, as they said, it's uh, it's where money, paper money was first introduced on a regular basis. But let's look at a couple of other things. So I've mentioned Neuralink and how that connects as what I thought to the Mark of the Beast. Um, once again, Neuralink Corporation is an American uh, neurotechnology company founded by Elon Musk and others developing implantable brain machine interfaces. The company's headquarters are in San Francisco. Now, what is funny about that is that San Francisco, once we get in, you'll have to bear with me. Um, <clears throat> San Francisco was part of some missions. Um, that was started by the Roman Catholic Church or by Catholic missions. And this is obviously where Neuralink is being pioneered now or, or, or developed in headquarters down in San Francisco. And this says San Francisco was founded on June the 29th, 1776, where colonists from Spain established Presidio of San Francisco at the Golden Gate and Mission San Francisco de Assis a few miles away, all named for St. Francis of Assisi. Okay, now I could go into uh, the links, but I'm trying to cut down on time tonight. You can look that all up yourself. Um, 
or, or look through the other videos that I've got. But as I've said, Neuralink is being pioneered now, uh, you know, down in uh, San Francisco. So it's quite crazy that with the tie-ins to Rome or the Catholic Church, we have Neuralink uh, being developed there now, which is a precursor or a predecessor of the Mark of the Beast, I personally think. And, you know, that connects to Rome where, um, you know, where we get the name from for money and where we get minting from. So some uh, some really special tines there. Now, as I've just mentioned, Sweden, for those of you that uh, are not familiar with it at the moment, um, down in Sweden at the moment, there's been uh, there's a company called Biohacks, and Biohacks um, via the creator of Biohacks, which is an insertable uh, or injectable implant which will go underneath the skin in the hand. Um, thousands of people in Sweden have been implanting microchips in their hand as a part of a new biohacking trend there. Um, so the company has, has launched this. More than 4,000 people have taken this chip. And it's allowed people to replace physical key cards, IDs and train tickets. And there are companies um, worldwide that are looking at investing in this in this technology or so on and so forth. So, yet again, from where we see that paper money was first introduced in Sweden, now we see what is almost a prophetic parallel later on that we see these chips that are being majorly imp implanted from down in Sweden. Now, how this all connects up with the Bible is that in Matthew 24, the Lord basically says, that uh, Matthew 24 verse 14 and the gospel of the kingdom shall be preached in all the world for a witness unto all nations and then shall the end come okay but it also says in, in verse 11 that many false prophets shall rise and shall deceive many now many false prophets in essence also include institutions like the catholic church and empires that have been utilized um or utilized initially um religious control to achieve global dominance and um when we see how that marries up with the fact that currency has spread via these empires um who have duped people religiously and whether you look at it being from Sweden or whether you look at, look at it being from Rome, significant tie-ins and connections are there even now. But the Bible says here that the gospel basically shall be preached for witness unto all nations and then shall the end come. So let me put it this way. The gospel is going out to as many people as possible and Bible prophecy so that as many people can accept in a progressive form will do and this is like God's efforts to spread his word and to save people but there's also an effort by the devil which the Lord has basically shown in prophecy so when we go to Revelations chapter 13 yeah again and it talks about the first beast and then the second beast we get, once again in verse 16, for the second beast, he causes all, both small and great, rich and poor, free and bond, to receive a mark in their right hand or in their foreheads. That's Revelation 13, verse 16. And verse 17, it says, And that no man might buy or, buy or sell, save he had that mark, or the name of the beast, or the number of his name. Now, how incredible is it that in Sweden now, from where paper money was first introduced into Europe, we have chips being inserted. And in San Francisco, you know, we have uh, Neuralink, which is 
going to be like the first implantable brain chip. The Bible is an astounding book of prophecy and I personally believe it shows things from origin points through to their full fruition and you can trace them, they're traceable. You know, the Bible says what is um, hidden in the darkness will come out in the light. Now, in Matthew 22, um, the Pharisees, I believe, um, try to trick Jesus into some form of error. And they say to him, what do you think? Um, you know, I, I believe Jesus, you know, they show um, Jesus a denarius, although it might not be in this particular book. But they said, um, or they asked him, is it lawful to give tribute unto Caesar or not? Um, and Jesus perceives their wickedness and he says, why tempt me, you hypocrites? Show me the tribute money, which is the denarius. And they brought unto him a penny. And he said unto them, whose is this image and superscriptions? And they said unto him, it's Caesar's. Then Jesus said unto them, render therefore unto Caesar the things which are Caesar." And unto God the things that are God. Okay, that is Matthew 22. Sorry, I've gone past the verses. Matthew 22, verse 21 and 22. Now, what is Jesus showing here without even going into the prophecies that are in Revelation or Daniel? And I'll tell you exactly what it is. Jesus is saying... That unless something is totally um, ordained by God or of God, it's not of God. And there is coming a time whereby you won't be able to buy or sell without a mark. And that's what is prophetically in place in the Bible. And the Lord basically says, obviously, whoever takes that mark will taste of his wrath and will not enter into eternal life and you can see how that corresponds where if you are relying or you're going to rely on a mark or the things of this world of this system to ensure your physical survival God can have no part of you because in essence it's the materialism the consumerism living just for the physical which basically transpired in the garden which has caused the fall and has caused sin and that's what's mirrored in the future with the mark when you take it you're totally giving yourself over to believing or investing in the world system and the financial system in that time benefiting you Anyway, I thought these were really remarkable revelations. I hope you understand it all. Uh, if not, feel free to drop me a line. Um, all of the links are there. God bless. This is Brother Darren, Hebrews 9, verse 27, and John 3, verse 16. Once again, if you don't know the Lord, seek him why he may be found. Accept Jesus Christ as your Lord and personal Saviour. Believe, trust, adhere, rely on him. Turn away from sin and you will be saved. God bless.